I am unable to heal after my wife betrayed me a year ago. I married young and was fascinated at the time, therefore I ignored any red flags or character flaws in my wife. However, she was emotionally attached to me, so we married a few months into our relationship. She became pregnant shortly after, and we moved in with her parents because I was stuck in her nation during the lockdown. Anyway, because we were in a serious relationship, I thought it was superfluous for her to have male friends on her Instagram account. She was fine with everything until I was going to delete her so-called relative, who was actually a cover-up and a person with whom she had some type of friendship slash a short thing. I didn't realize it was her ex till later. She argued with me about it and then re-added him. Now, I know she lied about her encounters multiple times, if not large falsehoods, then tiny lies that she later amended. Keep in mind that I didn't mind it, but it was the fact that she lied about it that bothered me. This made me want to sit her down and get her to confess about things, and she began talking about this person she called cousin or like a cousin, or like a brother, and how she complimented him in some areas while despising other aspects of his behavior. She told me they met twice, first when she was cheated on by her partner and he traveled from another country to assist her. Second, she went to him. Now, I only know about the second circumstance she told me about, in which he came to her apartment and tried to make contact, kissing her and so on, but she eventually declined and told her she cannot. Obviously, I don't like to go into too much detail, but when I asked her how she felt when he caressed her buttocks, she stated she got wet. So I'm doubtful about what she's saying since she previously told me that there was this one guy who offered her to a hotel, but she rejected, but afterwards admitted to me that they slept, which she told me in a terrible way while crying. My life fell apart and I froze when I discovered it wasn't her cousin. She sobbed to me and said, I know who I truly love. I was completely shattered. Because I still didn't trust her, I found myself asking for more information about where they were in the apartment and what exactly transpired there. After a few attempts, she swore that I already knew everything about her, and that was the end of it. However, the last time I contacted her and stated something was hurting me and asked her why she said she got wet if it wasn't true, she answered nervously, I said it to make you furious. When I asked her why she added some of her male friends from school back in her ex, she stated it was to show them her relationship status, which is different from what she said the first time. Now she isn't the worst person ever. She displays her devotion for me despite the fact that we have a lot of disagreements because I haven't totally recovered from the lies, and... I don't know how to move on, a child is involved, and I am unable to simply separate because it is a significant challenge for me, as some have suggested here. Story number 2. My ex fiance cheated on me and then demanded what she was entitled to from my mother's home. So, when I was in my late teens, I met a girl who I thought was the one. She was the first female I had dated with whom I had a genuine relationship at the time. I was young and naive at the time. She was the first female I ever said I love you to, and I assumed it meant we were in it for the long haul. For a few years, everything was perfect. Then she got a second job at a liquor shop to supplement her income, so she could buy a car and start thinking about moving out of her mother's house. I felt that was admirable. On that point, I wholeheartedly agreed with her. I was still living at home with my mother, and the construction job I was doing didn't pay enough for me to move out and have a car. We could surely afford a place of our own with her working two jobs. After a few months of working at the booze store, including one robbery in which a guy struck her in the head, she began to act strangely. I attributed it to the robbery incident. That messed with her a little. It didn't set off any warning bells, but she had purchased a car and began giving one of her male employees rides home when her shift ended. I didn't think anything of it. That's all there was to it. Not only through her co-workers, but also from her best friend. Did I learn that she had been cheating on me with this guy after they left work? She cried and denied it when I challenged her about it. I was madly in love. I trusted her. I just assumed it was jealousy rumors. My friend mentioned traveling to Mexico for a trip with the boys. I never flown on a plane before, let alone abroad of Canada, so I was ecstatic. I had some money saved up from work, so four of us went, without my girlfriend. I cheated. While in Mexico, I still feel terrible about it. But back then, 15 years ago, I guess I was simply trying to get back at her. When I returned to Canada, I felt so guilty that I immediately went to a jewelry store and purchased an engagement ring. So yes, I used Chandler Bing to find it. She said yes, and everything was back to normal. We had been married for a year and a half. 
She was still living with her mother, and I was still with mine. During this time, she broke up with me four times for the silliest of reasons. She once came over to my house, and her clothes were still wet from when I washed them. Near, but not quite. She stormed out, opening the dryer and grabbing her clothing. When she got home, she dumped me. That was the first occasion. I was devastated. It happened a few more times after that, but they were minor. I wasn't concerned. After the third time, everything was fine. I was out of town on a business training session the last time we split up. On Valentine's Day, I contacted her from my hotel and asked how she planned to celebrate. We have to talk. That's how she began every breakup. I was done at this point. She stated that she wasn't sure whether this was what she wanted to do with her life, yada yada. I concurred. I didn't want a female who would break up with me whenever she was sad. I told her to come over when I got home, bring me the ring, and I'd give her anything she had left at my mother's house. Isn't it simple? Not at all. This is where she goes when she shows up to my mother's place with her mother in tow. She hands me the ring, and I hand her the clothes she left behind, some shampoo and a DVD copy of the notebook that I paid for but didn't want. She appeared perplexed. I inquired as to the nature of the situation. She looked me in the eyes and said, shouldn't I get more? I assumed I had misheard her. I inquired as to what she meant. Well, we were engaged, so I suppose I should get more stuff. Do I have a right to have? I couldn't stop giggling. I'm not even joking. As upset as I knew I'd be for the next several days, it was the moment I realized I had no love or respect for her. We talked for a while with her mother, no one else was home at the time, who similarly believed she was entitled to more than her possessions. I kicked them out after about five minutes of them, pointing at everything in my mother's house and stating they wanted it. Bye, good luck, I said to her as she stood at the front step, looking like she wanted to fix something. You're going to need it. You both. The bullet was effectively avoided. Wow, that still astounds me to this day. What makes you believe you deserve my mother's possessions, especially when we don't even like together? Epilogue, I still talk to her mother and brother every once and then. My ex is now a fentanyl addicted 403 who is in and out of jail and living on the streets. She had a little straight edge when we were together. Even refused to try marijuana with me and just drank infrequently. It astounds me when her brother tells me about finding her sleeping in alleys and talking about the government spraying meth in the air to kill homeless people. She also speaks quite ghetto, which is strange considering she was so proper when we were together. I'm always curious what would happen if I happened to see her working on a street corner. I'd probably feel nothing but pity for her at this stage in my life. That's all I've got. I'm still baffled as to how she departed as hard as she did. Unfortunate. Edit. Some typos have been corrected. I also came up with an amusing tidbit that I thought I'd share. This girl was unable to drive. She got a car, a maroon-colored POS, and drove it for maybe a month before wrecking it. Her insurance company provided her with a rental automobile, which she then drove into a pole in the first week. I suppose they rejected her a rental after that. When she got her car back from the shop, she drove it for almost a month before crashing it again. Following that, her insurance company upped her premiums to the point where even Bill Gates might reconsider taking public transportation. She was forced to park the car after it was fixed for the second time. It had been sitting outside her mother's townhouse for who knows how long. My friend, who lived across the street from her, said she watched my ex practically every night come home from work, start her car, sit in it for a while, shut it off, and then walk inside. At the very least, she wasn't crashing it any longer. Cheater punishment, so this story suddenly came to me while I was recalling the whole booze shop incident. So after I confronted her about cheating and we reconciled, we went to a boxing match. Tanya Harding was in town, sparring the local girl. It was just hilarious. Tanya was struck in the face repeatedly by the local girl, but it was Tanya's reaction to being punched that was comical. So, after the event, we took a cab to the liquor shop where she worked to get some beer. The guy she cheated on me with was working at the cash register. My ex was my ex collapsed and ripped a massive hole in the floor when we were paying for the alcohol. I tried to pick up my ex, but the smell hit me like a ton of bricks. Smells hot, thick, and chewy. Oh, my goodness. I took her in my arms and stared at the guy. He had a nasty expression on his face. Ducker, chew on that for a while. Long time after edit. So I'm receiving a lot of flack for being an idiot and claiming that everything is a hoax. Everything is fine. I met this girl about 17 years ago. Back then, I was a completely different person. 
I deeply regret cheating on her out of maturity, and clearly, I wasn't ready for a meaningful relationship at that moment. In terms of proof, I'd be delighted to speak with a mod and provide whatever evidence I can. I'm not sure what I can say to prevent folks from calling in on this, but I'll try.